All right, now the next one I want to talk about was was Jimi Hendrix, and his story is a little bit different than than some of the others. Uh, now, Jimi only records for for four years in in his whole career, which doesn't seem like too much, and a lot of this is even in England. But he he is something the world has never seen before. I mean, we're talking about playing the guitar kind of in a way that no one ever has before. And we're going to kind of talk about some very interesting, something that happened in Jimmy's early life that that, that helped him to, to learn to do that. But but I think like his performances at Woodstock and the Monterey Pop Festival just blew the world away. And, and I think, again, it's interesting. Jimmy's from Seattle as well, and he has this very unusual childhood growing up. Uh, for one thing, his name's not Jimmy. His name is John. He's called Buster for a long time. And his dad is in the army. And so Jimmy has to stay with his mom. And his mom's this very promiscuous, hard-drinking kind of party girl. And so she doesn't want to be a mom. She, she'd rather party and do her thing. So she kind of ships Jimmy off. And, her, and meanwhile, his dad is trying to get back to Jimmy. He goes AWOL at one point to try to see his son. Army throws him in the, st- in the stockade. And so Jimmy moves to the California. He's kind of bouncing around. Well, finally his dad comes back. And his dad, uh, they, they start calling him Jimmy again. Uh, first it's James, then Jimmy. So, so again, it's not even really his name, which is interesting. But, and then I, real, real briefly, there, his mom came back into his life at that age. Uh, at about six and again she just couldn't keep off the booze and drinking and sleeping around and she eventually dies at 32 which devastates Jimmy but it's also interesting to think about his relationship with women because he was at times verbally and physically abusive he kind of he beat some of the women he was with but he had this kind of anger towards women that dated back probably to some of these early experiences with his mother and so Jimmy, it's, this is this is the amazing part. So he gets a, he gets a guitar from his dad, but it's not the right guitar. It's a left-handed guitar, so he has to turn it around and play it the other way, which is is helps him kind of create this sound that is totally different than anybody, anybody's ever seen. This guitar costs five dollars. So you think about this at the time, probably he's thinking, oh, God, this is a jip," but. <laughs> what he did was change the strings around and start playing it in a totally different way. And what happened in, those, in, that, in that one little moment when he, when he was just a young guy was something that created one of the most sort of amazing sounds that, that the world has seen. And so I, it's, it's sort of amazing to think, to sometimes track back and see some of these things that have, that have happened. Now, Jimmy had a lot of... of a lot of bad luck, I guess. He he played with uh, Little Richard first, but R- Little Richard, Jimmy was becoming too too popular, and he was becoming too good, and Little Richard didn't want to split time with him. So Jimmy started playing in New York City, and he, at first people really weren't kind of into it, but then, like, finally it was started to realize that he was that he was genius. So he came up with Hey Joe and Purple Haze, which were huge hits in England. Uh, but it was finally in the Monterey pop festival where he really kind of broke out it's like the distortion the feedback on the guitars and then he sets the guitar on fire so this is like people haven't seen this before this was pretty amazing now jimmy again is using drugs pretty heavily at this point um especially after his band the jimmy hendrix experience they're having all kinds of problems and some of it's based on race he's white i'm sorry he's, he's black his bandmates are, are white and the black panthers are putting heavy pressure on jimmy to uh the kind of that he's that he's selling out, and he has to be a part of the solution when it comes to black power, that kind of stuff. So he's kind of a, a wreck about this stuff. But at Woodstock, he kind of throws another band together, and the Star Spangled Banner, just one of the definitive things that have ever happened on stage before. And 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 the thing about Jimmy is he was very very sloppy with kind of the business aspect of of his of his playing, and he. He only had twenty one thousand dollars at the time of his of his death, although he had made millions. So he knew it, and he'd been arrested for drugs, which had created this massive anxiety for him. And he knew he was out of money, even though he'd been working like these four years that he was a star. He worked just tirelessly. He was an extremely hard worker, and that was kind of part of his guiding lines for his dad. And so 
it, it all got to be too much. And again, uh, an overdose, choking on his own vomit. Most people know that. There is some controversy there as well. Some claims his body was was mishandled on the way to the hospital. And so there were some things going on there as well. But again, he was a very hard worker. And again, it's like important to kind of look back and see what happened. What, what was it about Jimmy that also had this hard time connecting to other people? And it was something that was pretty apparent in his life. He he pushed people away a lot. He pushed band members away. He didn't have a lot of close friends. Uh, he was kind of a loner. And this this uh, issue with women that kept coming up, you know. He, so I think like you look at his sense of stability as a child. He moved around a lot. He was very shy and introverted, extremely lonely. So again, he's got this little five dollar guitar and he's just spending hours and hours and hours learning how to play it. And it's his escapism. It's his way of kind of getting out of his own head. And again, this is a theme that we see over and over with these guys, is just wanting to get out of your own head through, through your creativity. So he uh, becomes a virtuoso. And, but, but, you know, there are many things about his, his family values that he rejects. He, his family was a very religious family, and Jimmy rejects that. He he rejects Christianity and felt like music was the mystical and sort of spiritual side of life. And so that was one thing that he did reject. He came. There was a lot of, uh, of talent in his family. Now, one thing that was very interesting was that Jimmy had some uh, Cherokee blood in him. And this is, again, sort of a controversial topic. Uh, but whatever the case, however much Cherokee blood Jimmy actually had... He felt a very strong identification with this this part of his ancestry, and so when he played cowboys and Indians as a kid, Jimmy always wanted to be the Indian, and so he was always drawing pictures of the Indian sort of conquering the cavalry, and he even wrote about that in one of his songs, "Castles Made of Sand." But he began to think of himself in that way as the Indian that sort of had conquered uh, the 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 white world out there in a way, if you will, and. Which was partially true, but uh, that's where I think when you when you see how he was robbed so badly in his life, uh, that paradigm or that story sort of fits, and it even even sort of looking at it now, all these years later, it sort of fits. Uh, and another thing that happened: Jimmy saw Elvis in Seattle when he was growing up, and he just became absolutely fascinated with his showmanship. So he he wanted to sort of duplicate Elvis's lack of inhibition on the stage. So, he's again, he's, he draws Elvis over and over growing up. So, again, you, you think about these things, and maybe sometimes we don't realize these, these very significant events when they're happening. In fact, I would harbor a guess that we almost never do. But especially as kids, these, these, very, these things that are, will really shape our destinies and really have these massive effects on our stories, we don't get them at the time. But for Jimmy, man, it was seeing Elvis. That was, that was a big deal for him. And that's when he really knew that what he wanted to do. And I think that one idea that comes up sometimes, and this is something that I've, I've written about a lot, is, is the idea of narcissism. So narcissism is, is misunderstood a lot of times. We just think of some pompous asshole that doesn't give a shit about other people. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of true. But, but basically, narcissism is, has its root in sort of early childhood rejection. When you learn you can't count on other people, you realize, okay, well, fine, I'm going to do it by myself. I'm going I'm to have to go it alone, and I can't count on other people. And I think that one thing that happens with very talented people is a, what can happen is a healthy narcissism, meaning like my way is better than doing it. And I believe that, and that's going to give me the confidence and the persistence to accomplish what I want. And for Jimmy, that was it, because he's playing the guitar like no one's ever played it, and there's not a, there's not an audience for it. But he believes it, man, and he believes it very, very strongly, and eventually the world starts to agree with him. So I think that's the fascinating kind of thing about Jimmy. And again, you know, you think about this very, very lonely, shy, introverted guy that on stage becomes a whole different kind of animal. So again, we see a lot of, this, of the themes that we've seen in, in some of the other guys. But his story was a little different just because, you know, his, his, his death was an accident. Now, the others, you could argue... Uh, I, I mean, it's 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 tough to argue that any of them were really an accident. Janice's man, she had flirted with disaster many, many, many times, and talked about suicide. So, again, 
a very tragic story and uh, and one I hope people can learn from.